Praise God, and thank you for joining us tonight at our Bible study at Christ Temple Apostolic Church. Uh, tonight, our theme is going to be on faith toward God, and that is in keeping with our year-long theme on staying connected to Christ for life. Let's pray. God, I thank you for uh, your word. I thank you for those who are joining with us tonight. God, I pray that you would give me exactly what to say, and Father, give your hearing exactly what to hear. God, I pray that you would open up our Open up our ears, God, open up our eyes, and Father, open up our hearts. Oh, God, that your word, oh, God, may have its free course. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, our theme tonight is on faith toward God. And last time we were together, felt led to uh, really just kind of take a little time to get some gratitude uh, to those uh, who are responsible for making this happen. That includes our pastor, District Elder Charles A. Warner. Uh, our senior elder, Elder Quinn and Coleman, uh, Elder George Johnson, who uh, has for so long served as our Bible study coordinator, and also Brother Eric Whiteside, who is our lead uh, for audio and visual and all things technical. Uh, and if you see any great edits, that is coming from his shop. And so we are very appreciative uh, of all the work that's going into making this happen. And, you know, this kind of follows the template that the Apostle Paul was led to also follow in Romans chapter 16, verse 1 through 5, when in the, even after all of the ministerial work that he was engaged in, he would take time at the very end of the letter and to make sure that he would commend those who were there helping cover and take care of all the things that people may not see. And so we want to make sure, amen, that we do that as well. Now, our overarching consideration for this Bible study is coming from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, if you don't have your Bible handy, you may want to get it handy because obviously we're going to be in the word of God tonight. Uh, but Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, that but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, and that is Christ. And so our goal is that we always want to make, speak the truth in love for the purpose that we can all grow up in all things into him who is the head, and that is none other than Jesus Christ. So again, hope you have your Bibles ready. Hope you have your pencil and paper ready, and we're going to get into the Word of God. Now, our lesson tonight is, is, is has a specific audience in mind, and that is it is for those who are determined to use God's Word as a lamp unto their feet and as a light unto their pathway. I can't get away from that. Uh, it just seems like that has just been sticking with me for a while. That it is for those who are determined to use God's word as a lamp unto their feet and a light unto their pathway. Now, the launching text for tonight, as we began to talk about faith toward God, is coming from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And that I typically do, I am reading out of the New King James Version of the Bible. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so, as I mentioned already, our theme for tonight is on faith toward God. And if you're looking at my screen, you may be wondering why is why is the title at the very bottom of the page? Why is faith toward God at the bottom of the page? Well, that is because uh, faith toward God is is an important, but it's more a foundation uh, to a relationship with God. It's a foundational step. And so really, when we talk about faith toward God, we want to make sure we have faith toward God because uh, when we have faith toward God, then that enables us and, and helps us to repent and to enter into repentance, right? And faith toward God and we're, is working to, to give us a mind to repent. And then when we after we repent, we are we are now open to being baptized in Jesus' name. And then and after and that we are baptized in Jesus' name, we are now seeking the Holy Ghost to, re, to receive his spirit in us with the evidence of speaking in tongues. <coughs> And then, of course, it leads us to want to live a holy lifestyle. And so 
uh, faith. We're talking tonight about faith toward God, but it is a foundation really to our relationship with God. So the reason that faith toward God is at the bottom of the page, because this is like the foundation, right? We are talking about, you know, just if we want to have a relationship with God, I'm assuming that everyone who's looking at this, this Bible study, whether uh, you are brand new or you just kind of stumble upon it, that you know what? I, yes, I want to have, I want to have a relationship with God. Then tonight, this lesson for you, because we are talking about faith toward God, which is a foundational step. Now, when we say faith toward God, I need to kind of put something out here to clarify, because, because the Bible talks about faith in a number of ways. And I'm going to give you one comparative way, and I'm going to clear that up so we can make sure that we know what we're talking about tonight. Now, there is the gift of faith toward God, which we're going to talk about tonight. But there's also something called the gift of ministering faith. And you may not have heard that term ministering faith, but I, if you've read your Bible anytime, I bet you've seen it. So let's, let's go ahead and just kind of clear this up. Uh, in your Bible, in, in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, there is a famous passage. And, and it's Jesus, and he's talking to his disciples. And he's telling them about the power of faith, right? And he's actually referencing ministering faith that I'm going to show you here in a minute. Uh, in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, uh, Jesus says, For surely I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done, he will accomplish whatever he says. So you know some key words there. Uh, talks about faith. He talks about uh, say to you, believe, right? Believe what you're thinking, uh, and you can call the mountain to be removed, uh, and 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 it's going to accomplish. This is what I call faith to do or faith to accomplish, and really this is ministering faith. And 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 why do I say that? Well, in First Corinthians chapter twelve, verse five. We see that there is a ministry of faith, right? And 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 5, I'm going to read verse 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 5 through 9 of 1 Corinthians, because I need to really help you understand that there's this thing called ministering faith, so we don't get it confused with faith toward God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 5, the Apostle Paul says, There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. And then it says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. And now we're going to start getting particular. For to one is given the word of wisdom. Notice he didn't say to all. For to one, these are all in the house of God. For to one in the house of God is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. And look at this, to another, the word of knowledge. So to one in the house of God, they're giving the word of wisdom. To another in the house of God, they are given the word of knowledge through the same spirit. And then in verse nine, to another faith. Wait a minute. What do you mean to another faith? I thought we all have faith. Well, there is different types of faith. There is faith toward God, which we're going to talk about but there's also this thing that we're seeing right now in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 5 to 9, this gift of faith for ministering, which is why it's under the section about talking about differences of ministries, okay? Now, this faith, this gift of ministering faith is, is important, but it is not the gift of faith toward God that we're going to talk about. This is, this is over and above, this is ministering faith, right? What we're talking about tonight, when we talk about faith toward God, we're really talking about this essential faith that everyone needs to have. If they're going to be saved, they need to have this level of faith. Notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, not everyone gets that faith, right? It says to another. But in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, the word of God lets us know that there is a different type of faith because it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. So if it's impossible to please God without faith, and only one is getting it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, only one, only some get this particular type of faith in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, that means that we are talking about two different faiths. 
We're talking about ministering faith in 1 Corinthians 12, and we are talking about an essential or basic faith toward God in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. We see this in another way in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. Are you seeing a connection here? That we have the gift of faith toward God, which is about salvation, not about to do, not about to accomplish. This is about basic salvation. This is about pleasing him, pleasing our God. And we, we see that even in John chapter 14, verse 6, this faith toward God being shown us again. Jesus said to him, talking to one of his disciples, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And so we see this faith toward God is concerned. You probably picked up on it, salvation. Faith toward God is concerned with salvation. It is concerned with the foundation of salvation. It's not about out there healing people. It's not about out there uh, removing mountains with the faith of a mustard seed. No, no, no. This is faith toward God. Faith toward God. So tonight, we are talking about faith toward God. We are focusing on faith toward God. This is the faith that everyone who is going to be saved will need to have. If we're, you're going to walk in the relationship with God, true, authentic relationship with God at its foundation must have at its core faith toward God. This is the faith that everyone who is going to be saved will need to have. This faith is essential. Now, let's give an overview of faith toward God. When we look at faith toward God, we're really going to be focusing on Hebrews chapter 11. So you might just want to turn your Bible and just kind of just kind of pin there. And we're going to be spending really a lot of time on verses 1 through 5. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 5. When we talk about faith toward God, we're talking about real knowledge begins with faith toward God. We're, we're looking at that in Hebrews 11, verse 3. Real knowledge begins with faith toward God. Faith toward God compels us to whatever it takes to be accepted by him. Faith toward God. When we have faith toward God, it compels us to do whatever it takes to be accepted by him. And we'll see that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Faith toward God will result in our ultimate salvation. When we have faith toward God, it will result in our ultimate salvation. And we see that in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. Now, let's get into the scripture here. Uh, we referenced Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 5. Let's just look at it. We see in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, we kind of read this already. This is our theme text for the night. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Verse 2, for by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. Tonight, we are not going to expound it, verse 2, but suffice to say, that verse two really is kind of helping us foreshadow what we're going to talk about in verse three, four, and five. Verse three, by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That's important. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Verse four, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. Verse 5, by faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And so we have here uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 5, in which we are going to really take some time and understand what it is, or what is the composition of faith toward God, okay? 
So we're going to look at the composition of what faith toward God really is. In other words, we're going to take it out of the vague reference where he said, I have faith toward God, right? We're going to really see what the, what the Bible says about it. In other words, we got the skeleton called faith toward God. Now the word of God is going to put some meat on that skeleton for us. They're going to put some muscle on that skeleton so we will clearly be able to identify, right, what faith toward God really is. Okay, so let's look at this quick overview. Now, I told you Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 5, really gives us faith toward God. I am providing this page here as a summary so we can clearly see what we're about to break down. Faith toward God includes three specific elements. One element is creation faith. Remember in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, it says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. That is creation faith. Faith toward God is the basis for all true understanding. And all true understanding and our human experience really starts with how do we get here? How does this world get here, right? Faith toward God contains creation faith. Creation faith is an essential element of faith toward God. Said another way, if we don't have creation faith, we don't have faith toward God, right? And if we have faith toward God, that means we are in our we are we are totally uh, saying we totally get we we agree with creation faith. We 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 accept that. Uh, we, in verse four, we see that by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. That's letting us know that faith toward God includes and I this is a, a term that I coined accepted by God faith. Accepted by God faith. In other words, we have creation faith and we can accept that God created it, but are we accepted by God? Faith, faith toward God includes an element of being accepted by God because we see here in 11 verse 4, by faith, Abel offer God a more excellent sacrifice. We will, we will talk a little bit more about that. And finally, we see in verse 5, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. I call this rapture eligible faith. Faith, but faith toward God includes rapture eligible faith. And so if we have faith toward God, that means we have creation faith. We have, we are, we have accepted by God faith, and we have rapture eligible faith. And this is the type of faith that pleases God. So we see in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it's not on my screen, but if you look at it, it says, uh, for, for, for without faith, it's impossible to please God. This is the type of faith that pleases God. And this is the type of faith that will lead to repentance, that will lead to water baptism in Jesus' name. It will lead to receiving the Holy Ghost. It will lead to holy living. Now, let us go and really start working our way through these, these verses tonight. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 5. When we look, when we look in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 2, I want to start there. Give me verse 3, verse 3, excuse me. I want to start in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. It says, by faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. This is referencing, if you will, going back to the very beginning in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 has a statement that has been debated by non-believers. And when I say non-believers, you have people in church who are non-believers. You have people who claim to be, uh, uh, I, I believe God, but this whole creation thing, there has to be something more to it. Um, they're not really they're not really accepting the word of God at face value, right? Uh, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Real simple. Now, at, at, the core of at the core of unbelief, it's not really in my notes, but I just feel like I'm supposed to share this. At the core of unbelief, or I should say at the core of, at the core of unbelief is doubt, Right? At the core of unbelief is doubt, and doubt often looks for a way to express, its, express itself. Doubt looks for a way to sound like it's not doubt. Doubt when doubt when we doubt the word of God, it tries to come off as intellectual, but really it's just disguised doubt. Let me give you an example. So you hear people talk about, well, I know the Bible says, yes, I know it says in the beginning God created heaven and earth, but you know we got we have scientific proof that the earth is millions of years old and billions of years old. And we have scientific, scientific proof. And so even though I believe, you see this, even though I believe the word, you know, even though I believe there's it, it's got to be some way 
that maybe maybe he created a mankind, but he did it after he created all the stuff on earth. And they forget the fact that Jesus said that the world was created in seven days. They forget. They forget that. Uh, they because it's really doubt disguised as intellect. And here's what I've come to realize. And I can't say I came up with this myself. I've just been around long enough to hear some really some good wisdom on this. People think because the Earth is so mature in terms of its uh, history that therefore that provides evidence to their secret doubt that they now feel comfortable saying out loud. And that doubt is, well, maybe it's not like Genesis chapter one and one says. And they forget the, or don't think about the, uh, their fallacy, their logic. And what are their fallacy? What is their mistake? You realize that God created mankind full grown. When he created Adam, he was full grown. When he created Eve out of Adam's side, she was full grown. He didn't create babies and say, go ahead and grow up. He created them full grown. And we're not even told how old they were in the day of their creation. We don't know what they looked like. I should, I should say we know how old they were because they were like just born. But we don't know literally physically what their body composition was equivalent to in the day that they're created. God could have made Adam in the, when he was quote unquote made, born like a 80 year old man or a 70 year old man, whoever. Or he, he was fully grown. He was not made like us. So if God can make a man fully grown, and if God can take a rib and out of that rib or that bone make a fully grown woman, no more development needed, then you mean to tell me that God could not create an earth that was fully grown? Keep going. The beginning of wisdom, the beginning of understanding is believing God's word. And we see here, it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, by faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. And we see in Genesis chapter 1, he clearly declared it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In Genesis, excuse me, John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This is another one. I, I I see, I love how God just takes ownership, right, of everything, right? He says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And I love pointing out how here God even lets us know that he's over science. He's over physics. Because we know in, in physical properties, I cannot be with you and be you at the same time. I, I'm sitting on a chair. I cannot, I am sitting on the chair. I am not the chair. The chair is with me, but it is not me. But I am not God. Here we see that God lets us be known that in the beginning was the word. The word was with him, but the word was him because there is no separation, no distance between God and his word. Like there is no separation, no distance between me and my tongue. Right. And so I won't I can say a lot. I can I can say a lot, a lot, a lot about that, but I'm not. But just know that. Remember, it's by faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God. Verse two. And we see that he was that he was in the beginning with God. The word was in the beginning with God. Again, something else that God does, he lets us know that the word has a persona. And we'll, we can say more about that. All things were made through him, and without him, nothing was made that was made. And so we see that it is very, the, the word is laying out for us, right here in 11, Hebrews 11, chapter Three, chapter, excuse me, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3, the word is laying out for us that creation faith is a necessary component of having faith toward God. If all I just said, you say, I, 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 I can't do, I can't do that, then, then that means there's a problem with faith toward God because faith toward God, an essential element, a basic element is that you got to believe, you, I got to believe that God came the world. By faith, we understand that the world was framed by the word of God. No more, no less. Because once I understand that, this is going to give me the appreciation for God's word, by the way. And so how am I going to have faith toward God if I don't have faith toward the word? And how can I have faith toward the word if I think that his word is not all powerful? His word is all powerful. Let's keep going. I can spend more time here, but I feel I need to keep going. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Says, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. Listen, by faith, Abel offered to God a more 
excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. Now, this is going all the way back again. Did you notice, by the way, that we're just in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, and now we are going back again to Genesis chapter 4, verse 1? And we're going back. I love the way how, how the New Testament will often do this. It will go all the way back to Genesis because it's going back to God's pattern for first things. It's going back to God's pattern. Even before the law, it's going God, back to God's pattern, right? So first we, it shoots us back to Genesis 1. Now it's shooting us back again to Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, we are told about the first children born. We are told about Cain and Abel. Now in this story it says, now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, Cain the oldest one, and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time, his brother Abel. So now she has another son, his name, and his name is Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. So if we look at that today, we say like Abel was like a rancher, right? And, and Cain was a farmer. And it came in the process of time, excuse me, and in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. Verse 4, Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. Very important there's a lot here, but we're focusing on how this relates to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, it says, by faith, how about faith toward God? By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice, a more excellent sacrifice. Listen, you can offer to God and not have faith toward God because Cain did. A more excellent sacrifice. Faith to God is not just faith toward God is not just saying why I offered. I and you can say it could be financial, or it could be your time, it could be your will. Well, I gave this part to God, but not that part to God. I gave this part of my life to God, but not that part to God. I gave uh, the part of God that doesn't cost me as much, but I'm not going to give this part to God. I can give to God um, some of my ambition, some of my desires, but some of the stuff I need to hold back. Faith toward God is giving God everything. It is a more excellent sacrifice. It, it goes beyond just what you think is acceptable. And it says, what does God require? And somehow, Abel knew what God required. Now, this is, I, I always find this fascinating because there are some, there are some who, on, on one side, they want to have faith toward God. But on the other side, they want to hold on to what they want to hold on to. Oh, God. There's some, and one on one side, they really, they really do love God. But on the other side, they find themselves really trying to hold on saying, well, God didn't actually say this. God didn't actually, I don't, I read the Bible. He didn't actually say I had to do this, right? And this is a good example of the danger of that. Because we see in Genesis chapter four, verses one through five, when it's talking about the faith of Abel versus the faith of Cain, Check this out. If you go back to Genesis chapter 3, you will find that there was nowhere that God actually said you need to offer a blood sacrifice. There is nowhere he actually said you, you need to do this. However, he gives us an example. He gives us an example in Genesis chapter 3 because when Adam sinned, when Eve transgressed, when Adam sinned and his eyes were open and her eyes were open and they were kicked out of the garden, they made themselves fig leaves. They made some clothes out of fig leaves. And God doesn't tell them, go kill an animal, go take the skin, go put it on. God doesn't actually say that. He just does it. God himself goes and makes them skins. He makes them clothes out of animals. He never says, the Bible never says in that, in that, at, the, at this point, make sure that you do a blood sacrifice. Nope. He just models it. Oftentimes, God will model. He will model to give us opportunity. He will model his behavior. He will model his character. So we go, oh, that's what our daddy does. Oh, that's what, oh, that's what that, that oh, that's how we, 
Oh, that's how we do it. That what he did. Okay, do it like he did. And Abel had faith toward God, and he heard somehow he heard that. Yep, when we sin, God went and took skins. And what? Where, where, where do you get the skins from? Oh, oh, some animals. Oh, oh, he killed. God killed some animals. Oh, God killed the animals. Oh, God did that to give you skin because he didn't want you to 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 have the fig leaf. And Abel learned a lesson from God's behavior. And here we see God saying, good job, right? Good job. And so Abel, he gets respect from God. And verse four, Abel brought the firstborn of his flock and their flack. He's, he's, he's doing what God modeled. This is what God, this is how God would say we're supposed to sacrifice. He didn't say it, but this is how God modeled it. I'm going to follow God's model. And we see here the first time where he's following the model and God's like, God respects his, off his offering. But he doesn't respect Cain's offering, right? And so we see here, that faith toward God, faith toward God is very much about being accepted by God. And how can we be sure that we're being accepted by God? If we follow his model, if we follow his model, if we, okay, what is God doing? What does God tell us? What is God showing us? How is God demonstrating this? And, and not get caught on, but did he say we had to do this? Did he say we, I have to do it this way? Or should I just have enough faith toward God that my heart wants to be accepted by God so much. I say, you know what? I know God's going to accept what he models. I know that God's going to accept what he models. And we see here that Abel, Abel, his faith toward God was demonstrated by God. It was demonstrated by him following the model that God had shown, which means that he was going to be accepted. Let's keep going. In verse 5, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, it says, By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. And so, hey, guess what? We're back in Genesis again. <laughs> and Genesis chapter 5, Genesis chapter 5, we see the story of Enoch in verse 21. It says, Now Enoch lived 65 years. And begot Methuselah. Verse 22, after he begot Methuselah, Enoch walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. He had sons and daughters. Verse 23, so all the days of Enoch were 365 years. In verse 24, and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Mm hmm and Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. So Enoch is 65 years old. Uh, he has a son, Methuselah. Um, after he had Methuselah, he walked with God 300 years and had sons and daughters. Now, you know, I have to be transparent with you and tell you, I don't know if, if Enoch was walking with God before he had Methuselah. I don't know if Enoch, after he had a son, looked at him and said, you know what? I need to make sure that I'm being a good example. I don't know. But I do know that after he had Methuselah, we know that he walked with God for 300 years, right? I mean, and and and, and I got to just tell you, that that's a testimony. Uh, that can be a testimony against us if we find ourselves saying, you know, I just can't do this it's so long. He walked with God for 300 years and had sons and daughters. And so all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And he would have lived longer except... Enoch walked with God so much that he was not, for God took him. One of our elders, we were talking one day, he said it, it was like Enoch and God was walking, and, and, and God was like, you know, why don't you come to my place from now on, right? And 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 God took him, which means he did not die. And really, that's kind of getting us to what we see in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, the apostle Paul is writing to the Corinthian church. Now, and I and I love the where this where this ends up because the church of Corinth had a whole lot of issues, a whole lot of situations from the beginning of the book to the end. But we get to the back of the book and we have this word of encouragement, this word of encouragement that the apostle Paul is given by the Holy Ghost. In verse 51, he says, Behold, I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep. Everything I just told you in this letter, all the instruction, some of it you wanted to hear, some of it you didn't want to hear, some of it you were you celebrated. Some of this you probably loathe. He said, but listen to me what I'm telling you right now. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And he said, in a moment, I can feel it. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, 
at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. You, you don't think it's going to sound. It's, it's been a long time, and, you, and you're trying to figure out how I'm going to get through what I'm trying to get through. God, I, I don't like what I'm feeling right now. God, I'm really doing my best, but God, I feel like I, I don't know if I can make it. And he says, listen, you got to keep your head up because in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, not might sound, the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised and corruptible, and we shall be changed. The same way that God took Enoch. Bible doesn't let us know any, like Enoch had any clue what was about to happen. Doesn't let us know that Enoch had any idea that he was not gonna, uh, he was he was not gonna be the same that day. Whenever God took him, it says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And so there are gonna be some who die and some who don't die, but those who have faith toward God, those who are walking with a faith toward God. Just like Enoch was taken away and he did not see death, so will we be taken away and not see death. And we have the example of Enoch in Genesis 5, 21 through 24. And then we have the same word affirmed, confirmed to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 to 52. Hallelujah. And so I call this rapture eligible faith. I need to get ready to wrap up here because we've talked a lot and I pray this has been a blessing. As we just kind of come back to our summary, faith toward God is foundational, right? Faith toward God is what Hebrews 11, chapter 1, verse 5 is all about. Faith toward God includes the major elements that we really need to keep our eye on at all times. Creation faith, knowing and understanding in our heart that, yes, all knowledge begins with what God did. Listen, faith is the foundation of real knowledge. Faith is the real foundation of understanding, right? Creation's faith. And then faith toward God includes accepted by God's faith, right? It's not just accepting that God created everything, but now I want to live a life acceptable to God, right? So I accept that, yes, God created everything, but I also need to live a life acceptable. No, I need to. I may not be living it, but I need to know I need to live a life acceptable to God. Because if I know I need to live a life acceptable to God, that's going to make me repent when I'm not. That's going to cause me to and draw me to repentance. And faith toward God as this ultimate reward, which is this rapture eligible, it makes us rapture eligible, that one day God's going to call us and we shall be changed. Again, this is the type of faith that pleases God. This is the genuine faith toward God that will lead to repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, repentance, excuse me, receiving the Holy Ghost and being filled, uh, living holy lifestyle. So I pray this has been a blessing to you. I pray this has encouraged you. I pray if you haven't repented, I pray that this is enough to say, you know, God, I need to repent. I, I need I need to get my life right. I, I need to change. Um, and if you have, then I pray this is a, a, a encouraging to say, you know what, don't doubt. Don't doubt. And if you find yourself that you have doubted, go back to the drawing board and go back and say, what does God's word say about this? I just feel like if you, if there's something that's crept into your life, if there's a belief that's crept into your life, and I don't care who the who I don't care who said it was okay. I don't care what organization, I don't care uh what lead, I don't care. I don't care if you're my mom, your dad, your parents, whoever. Uh, go back to the drawing board and make sure that one, that your faith toward God is based on creation faith based on that you don't have no doubt that God created everything, that he's in charge of everything, make sure that your faith toward God includes this ideal, this, this yearning to make sure that you are accepted by God, right? Not, not that you can reason with God. God, you know, I can. I, I heard this. No, 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 that you are accepted by God and make sure that the heart of your faith toward God is this, this, uh, this assurance that you are rapture eligible because there's nothing there's nothing in your in your in the core of you that's that's going against the word of God. Praise God. Again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. God bless you all in Jesus' name.